أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد والله إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاتي ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وحلك منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء وتقوا الذي تسألون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأصل الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مختثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة We begin as we should always begin any righteous action by praising Allah Azza wa Jal the supreme, the sublime the unequaled, the one from whom everything that began and the one to whom everything will end. We begin in the name of Allah the generally merciful, the specifically merciful. We begin in the name of Allah who gives to us despite our asking, who guides us, who allows us to recognize Him. And we bear witness that there is no deity whatsoever no deity whatsoever worthy of worship except Allah. And that indeed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his last and most noble messenger and is indeed an example for the whole of mankind. And we bear witness that whoever Allah has guided, and indeed there's no greater blessing than guidance. As I mentioned, that Allah allows us to recognize Him, that Allah allows us to thank Him, that Allah allows us to ask of Him, that Allah allows us to beg Him. That Allah allows us to worship Him. What could be greater than this? That there's no greater blessing than this. And whoever Allah has favored with this, none can misguide that individual. And whoever Allah hasn't blessed with this guidance, then nothing can guide that person. Indeed, the best speech is the speech of Allah. And the best guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And our religion has been complete and is pristine. And any addition to it, any innovation within this is a going astray and every going astray is in the hellfire. So uh, the khutbah topic for today, I wanted to make it relevant. It's the, I guess, the first Jummah of the summer holidays. And I can see that there's some children here, alhamdulillah. And inshallah for the next six or so weeks, we should see lots of children coming to the masajid and this masjid as well. Alhamdulillah, it's nice to see the youngsters here. And we want their hearts to be attached to the masjid. Now normally summer holidays, when you think about them, it's a time when there's often blockbusters being released in the cinema. And there'll be a special superhero movie. There'll be a movie on that is about a superhero and often he fights against a supervillain. Now if this wasn't a khutbah, I'd ask some of the kids to say, give me some names of superheroes and supervillains and I'm sure that they will throw out lots of names to me. And it's important for us as parents, as Muslims, to understand who are the superheroes and supervillains that we need to tell our children about. And today's khutbah, inshallah, is going to cover a superhero and a supervillain that Allah tells us about in the Quran. This villain is someone who Allah said he's going to preserve him until the day of judgment as a sign for all of mankind. This was a villain who at one ishara, one say so, entire swathes of children were wiped out, were killed. He had an entire city under his ruler, rulership. He enslaved an entire people. And he would say, فَقَالَ Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, فَقَالَ أَنَّ رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ This is an individual who said, 
I am your Lord the Most High. This villain is none other than Fir'aun. Allah tells us in the Quran, and it's amazing, subhanAllah, why Allah tells us about his story. What was it about him that made him a villain? The first was his arrogance. Often we hear about people who are arrogant and have pride. But Fir'aun, he said, I am your Lord Most High. I have control over your life and death. Now, what's the lesson in it for us? It's not just that we hear these stories, but whenever we hear from the, the Sunnah or from the Quran where Allah describes qualities of people, then it's for us to learn from those qualities. And when they're bad qualities, that we avoid those qualities and we ensure that we don't have those qualities. Likewise, when we hear of good qualities, that we think, do we have these qualities? So the first quality of Fir'aun that made him this villain, that made him this great sinner, that made him, that made him this example for the whole of mankind, was his arrogance. The first sin ever was that of shaitan when he says, I am better than Adam alayhi salam. I am made from, or we are made from smokeless fire and he's made from clay. Now arrogance is such a subtle thing. And how many of us have it? How many of us think we're better than someone else? Maybe it's based on our race. Wa billah. Maybe it's based on our income. Maybe it's based on our family lineage. Maybe it's based on the fact that we live in the UK and our relatives live abroad, so we think we're better than them. Maybe it's based on our titles. Maybe it's based on where we live. Maybe it's based on our education. But everyone should stop and think, do we consider ourselves better than anyone else? Have we ever manifested it in our hearts? Hassan al-Basri, rahimullah, he used to say that I used to constantly fight with ego. Imagine this, Hassan al-Basri, the famous Zahid, the scholar. He goes, I would constantly fight with my ego until the moment that I would leave my house and every single person that I met, I would consider them better than me. How many of us do this? Maybe we come across some people and we think, what does this person know? And think of all the examples I gave, whether it be through money, whether it be through education, whether it be through our race, whether it be through our culture. These are all unfortunate diseases that we have in our communities, yeah? So the first quality that all of us should try to avoid is arrogance and ego. The second quality of Fir'aun was that he was tyrannical and he was oppressive. وَإِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ لَعَالٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الْمُسْرِفِينَ And indeed Pharaoh was the haughty within the land and indeed he was of the transgressors. And Allah says in another ayah, Indeed Pharaoh exalted himself in the land and made its people into factions, oppressing a sector amongst them, slaughtering their newborn sons and keeping their females alive. Indeed, he was of the corruptors. Now I pray, inshallah, obviously that there's no one to that extreme of oppression. But the quality of oppression has many different forms. And I say this looking at the men in front of me, because unfortunately, oppression and authority and power are two things that come hand in hand. So when Allah has made you a power or an authority over people, maybe as the father of the household, the man of the household, maybe as the elder brother, maybe as somebody who employs people, maybe as someone who's a manager, how do you treat those people who are weaker than you or those who can't say anything to you? Do you have a position of mercy and kindness or do you just tell them what to do? And I say this for some of the youngsters here, when you're the, if you're the eldest sibling, how do you treat your younger siblings? Are you kind to them? 
or because you may be physically a little bit bigger than them, that you bully them. This is also oppression. This is also tyranny. Especially if we know that the parties are weak and they can't say anything back to us. How do we behave towards them? This quality of oppression, Fir'aun had one extreme. But all of it is wrong. All of it is vul. All of it will come as darkness on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. There is nothing good about this quality. You see, even pride has a place where it may be good. When used in the right way. When it manifests itself as conviction. When you're proud of your faith. So even then you can maybe have some goodness in this. But oppression and tyranny, there is nothing good in it whatsoever. But how many of us may manifest it? And again, mashallah, I see many of the men in front of me. I assume that many of you are husbands and fathers. How are we with our families? This is why the Prophet ﷺ on his deathbed, the final words that he said, the final words. And you imagine that your closing statement is going to be the most important statement. And he said, as salah as salah as salah three times the prayer. And then he said, and ensure you look after the weak ones amongst you, those who you have authority over. Because he knew what we were like. So this is another quality that we all have to ensure that we don't have. That if Allah gives us some form of authority, some form of, I don't want to use the word power, but responsibility, that we don't manifest it in a negative way. That we don't abuse that trust and that strength or that skill that Allah has given us. The best of you are those who are best to their families. You can understand why. Unfortunately, it's those immediately around us who bear the brunt of our emotions. But also in the workplace. And also if you're employers. How many times have you heard of people who take advantage of their workers? Despite the Prophet saying, pay your workers before their sweat dries, we do anything but that. We'll ask them to work much longer hours. We'll push them. We'll speak to them rudely. We'll speak to them rudely. We'll speak down to them. Tell me we haven't experienced this. So this is another quality that we should avoid at all costs, oppression. And then the third one, making excuses in front of the truth. Allah tells us, وَلَقَدْ عَاتَيْنَا مُوسَىٰ تِسْعَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ فَاسْعَلْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ فَقَالَ لَهُ فِرْعَوْنَ إِنِّي لَأَذُنُّكَ يَا مُوسَىٰ مَسْحُورًا And we had certainly given Moses nine evident signs so ask the children, the Bani Israel, when he came to them and Fir'aun said to him, Indeed, I think, O Musa, that you are affected by magic. Now this is a specific context, but Allah tells us this for us to learn a lesson from it. And what's the lesson? That when someone comes to you with the truth and you know it, do you accept it? Or you deny it and make excuses? How many times have we been in this situation, brothers and sisters, those that can hear, when you may be involved in a discussion or an argument, and you know what the other person, they say something which is true, or they come with some evidence, but you won't allow yourself, your ego won't allow yourself to accept it. And again, the children, when your parents tell you to do something, and they say you should do it for this reason, you're like, no, 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 and you don't want to listen and you're arguing. Despite your parents saying to you, no, this is what you should do. And this is why it's better for you. But you want to do what you want to do. You want to do what you want to do, rather than what you're told to do. So this is another quality, my dear brothers and sisters, that when the truth comes to you, when someone corrects you, be humble enough to accept it. Be humble enough to accept it. So number one, avoiding arrogance. Okay, avoiding arrogance. Number two, don't oppress anyone, even in the slightest. And number three, 
When someone comes to you to correct you or to tell you what's better, then accept it. So this is our supervillain. The clear enemy, Fir'aun. But what of the hero of our story? What of the hero of our story? The Prophet Musa alayhi salam. The Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Allah tells us in the Quran, Hal ataka hadithu Musa? Have we told you the story of Musa? And it's amazing that Musa alayhi salam, he's mentioned in the Quran 169 times. He's the, he's the Prophet which is referred to the most often because of what he went through. And his life was given as an example to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so he could benefit from it. So many different things happened in the life of Musa Alayhi Salaam. But he had certain qualities that made him the hero of our story. Now one of the qualities, I'll say this just for the children, is that Musa Alayhi Salaam had phenomenal strength. He was known for his strength. That he would hit someone and they would go flying. In fact, he hit someone once and they passed away. That's how strong he was. That he was known for his strength. That even when the angel of death came to him in his form, because Musa salam said, show me what you look like when you go to the bad people. And the angel of death said to him, no, 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 I don't want to show you. And Musa salam said, no, show me, show me. And so he showed him and Musa salam was so shocked he punched him and his eye fell out. And the angel of death complained, complained to Allah Azawajal. So this is someone who had superhuman strength, subhanAllah. Our prophets were strong. They were leaders. So Musa alayhi salam, what are the qualities of him that made him a hero for us? Obviously other than him being a prophet and calling to Allah Azawajal and calling to the worship of Allah alone. But what were his characteristics? Number one, he rushed to help others. We know the story of the Coptic. I just mentioned where he hit and he killed someone. What happened? There was a person who was a Coptic Christian and uh, he was asking for help. He was being attacked and no one went to help him. But Musa alayhi salam rushed, rushed to help him because he heard someone calling out for help. And then he struck the person and that person died. And then Musa alayhi salam had to run away. The other example that we have is when he was in Midian. And he saw that there was a well. And there were lots of farmers at that time and shepherds who were taking their flock to drink water. And at the back of all of them, there were two women. And they couldn't get close. They couldn't get close with their animals to drink water. And they were looking around for help. And Musa alayhi salam, he took the animals forward and he gave them water. You see, when he saw something or someone needed help, he helped them. Musa alayhi salam helped them. He didn't say, this is someone else's responsibility. He didn't say, I don't know who they are, it's their problem. He didn't say, okay, inshallah, they'll be okay. And these were for people that he didn't know. These were for people that he didn't know. Today we're living in a time where you're talking about men and women etc. But there's an innate quality in being a man and being chivalrous and having rajula. That you will help women if they need help. This is an equality to say okay you can do everything by yourself. That he saw especially that those women they couldn't get to the water for their animals and he took it forward when the man cried out for help he was the one that went to help so again and i say this to the youngsters here when your mother or father ask for help don't let them ask twice in fact watch them don't even wait for them to ask run to help them and make it so, so often that it becomes your nature be someone who helps others. Be someone who helps others. This is a superhero quality, my brothers and sisters. Someone who helps others. And I'm sure all of you want to be superheroes. So be someone who helps others. Then the other quality of our hero, Nabi Musa alayhi salam, 
was that he's someone who sacrificed. When the truth became clear to him, he was someone who lived in the palace of Fir'aun. He was someone who lived in luxury. He was someone who had everything at his disposal. But he gave it up. He gave it up because of the truth. How many of us today are willing to sacrifice when the truth becomes clear to us? How many of us deal in haram and we're not willing to give it up despite knowing it's wrong? How many of us? How many of us are willing, and I'm going to say this here, to downsize because you want to get away from riba despite knowing how haram riba is? How many of us are willing to give up some luxury because of the truth and what Allah wants? So he sacrificed. And sacrifice happens on many different levels, brothers and sisters. Whether it's sacrificing your time, sacrificing your wealth, giving up some ease for yourself or someone else. How many of us would consider doing this? So sacrifice. The third quality is that when Musa السلام, made a mistake because all of us are insan and we will all make mistakes, he asked for forgiveness. He asked for forgiveness. You see the difference between him and Fir'aun? When Fir'aun was told the truth, he became more stubborn in his truth. When Musa السلام, was told the truth, or when he made a mistake, he asked Allah for forgiveness. Allah tells us in the Quran, in the Quran <coughs> قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَغْفِرْ لِي فَغَفَرْ إِلَهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ He said, My Lord, I have wronged my soul, so forgive me. Then he forgave him. Lo, he is the forgiving, the merciful. When he made the mistake, he asked Allah for forgiveness. And by extension for us, it's the quality of asking for forgiveness, whoever you've wronged. So we ask Allah for forgiveness, and if we've wronged someone else, then we ask them for forgiveness. So kids, when you argue with your siblings and you've done something wrong to them, be a hero. Say sorry to them. When you've upset your parents, say sorry to them. With your friends, say sorry to them. This is the quality of a superhero. has a step from too early. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. I'm very aware of the time, but I have three more qualities I very quickly want to go through of a hero. إن شاء الله. The fourth quality of Musa عليه السلام. You may think is bravery. Imagine someone who fought to defend the honor of someone who cried for help, someone who raised and faced an army of Fir'aun. But actually, the story of Musa alayhi salam, you'll find in the Quran in Surah Taha. And I really encourage everyone to go through this surah with your children. Because the surah, it has certain themes. And one of the themes of this surah is La takhaf, do not be afraid. Because there's certain things which happen in this surah which show that the person was afraid but they still continued. So for example, the mother of Musa alayhi salam, when she had a child and she was about to place it in the Nile and the Nile was wild and it's crashing. It was in a calm river. You can imagine it was how it, the waves were high and she wasn't sure as any mother would. Her heart faltered and she was scared. And Allah says, place it. Musa alayhi salam, when he had the Bani Israel with him, and they were being chased by Fir'aun and his army. And they'd come to the sea. And in front was the sea. And Musa salam, raised his hands. He asked, oh Allah, what should I do? We have the army behind us and the sea in front of us. And Allah says, go forward. Don't be afraid. Put your staff down. So why this is an important quality, my dear brothers and sisters. Often in life, you'll come across a situation where you may not be brave and you may not think you're able to handle it 
But bravery isn't the absence of fear. But bravery is to continue even though you may be afraid. Let me repeat that. Bravery isn't the absence of fear. But bravery is to continue even though you may be afraid. Because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. So when you're in a group and they say something that they shouldn't about someone. Then you speak out. When you're in the work environment. And obviously you have wisdom with these things. When they try and push certain agendas on you. You don't just accept it. With wisdom you say no. This may affect your income. You may be scared. When you see people talking and they act, commit acts of oppression. Who speaks out? Who speaks out? And it may impact you. But no. To speak out. Even though you may be afraid. Is bravery. So again, brothers and sisters and children, you may be scared to do something and you're not sure, but be brave. Go ahead and do it. And that fear is something that is natural. That fear is natural. But think about what the right thing to do is. The other quality, and this is terrible for me saying this because of the time, but it's timekeeping. It's timekeeping. So we're told in the Quran, وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّي لِتَرْضَى I hasten to you, O my Lord, so that you might be pleased. Musa alayhi salam, he didn't wait. When the opportunity for good came, he rushed to do it. He rushed to do it. He didn't turn up to Juma at 1.55, knowing that Umar is going to make it run over a little bit, and so he could catch it. He would have been here early. When you're told to attend something and you're given a time, you turn up on time. What a sad reflection of the Ummah it is that we're known for our late timekeeping. True or no? That we're given a time for something, they say, oh, it doesn't matter, we'll turn up an hour later. Yet we're an Ummah that is dictated to by time. That our Salah are given precise times. Yeah, how have we become people that just become relaxed about time despite Allah swearing by time? So timekeeping, being people who are known for their timekeeping, being people who turn up on time, being people who respect time is the quality of a superhero. And the last one, inshallah. Musa alayhi salam, despite being someone with super strength, and despite being a prophet of Allah and despite being someone who spoke to Allah he knew he couldn't do this by himself Allah tells us in the Quran أذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى قال ربش رح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من أحلي هارون أخي أشدد به أزري واشركه في أمري كي نصبيك كثيرا ونذكرك كثيرا إنك كنت بنا بصيرا قال قد أوتيت سؤلك يا موسى We're told that the famous dua of Musa alayhi salam where he says Oh my Lord, expand my chest Ease my task for me And remove the impediment from my speech so they may understand what I say. And give me support, give me a minister from my family, Harun, my brother. Add to my strength through him and make him share my task. That we may celebrate your praise without any impediment. And remember you without any impediment. For you are he that ever looks after us, Ya Allah. And Allah says, granted it is your prayer, O Musa. Now this is so important, my dear brothers and sisters. This ummah of ours, this religion of ours, calls to community. It's not about individuals. If you look at everything we talk about, it's about coming for salah in jama'ah. It's about doing things socially. You go and meet your family, how well you treat your family, how you treat your guests. When someone's not there, or someone's not well, you go and visit them. Islam calls to community. And Musa he knew that he needed help. 
So this to understand your own shortcomings. Know that you can't do everything by yourself. So first of all, he had self-awareness. Self-awareness, brothers and sisters. And he asks Allah for help. He asks Allah for help. And then he asks Allah how he needs help. That he needed to be made brave. Expand my chest for me. Give me confidence. You may not be sure about starting a new project. You might not be sure about whether you should take an action. Maybe there's going to be some risk in it. Maybe you place your deposit for Hajj and you don't have the money or how you're going to pay for it. Maybe you want to embark upon something to help the community and you don't have that much support from people. So he asked Allah to give him confidence to go forward. Maybe there's issues in your school. And I say this to the children. That maybe you don't have a prayer room and you want to set up a prayer room and you're not sure how to talk about it with your teachers. Or maybe in your school they're happy to raise for these other types of charities but when you want to raise a charity of your concern that you're not sure how to address it. So ask Allah for confidence. So this is what Musa a.s. did. And then he says, make my speech clear because Musa a.s. he had an impediment. He had a lisp. And so he asked Allah to make his speech clear. For us this is communication my dear brothers and sisters. Think about how you're communicating with each other. Children, think about how you're going to communicate with those older than you, your siblings, your friends and so on. And then he knew he couldn't do this mission alone. Musa a.s. knew he couldn't do this mission alone, so he asked for help from his brother. Again, for the children, get your siblings involved. Do something good for your parents. Do something good for your grandparents. Do something good for your community. Maybe you go and visit some elderly people who live in your area. Maybe you go and ask your neighbors how they are. Do it with your siblings. Get them involved. And for those of us who are elder, take some initiative. Know that you can't do it by yourself. Be a part of something bigger. Be connected to something greater than yourself. And these are the qualities, my dear brothers and sisters, of our hero Musa a.s. And we ask Allah to protect us and our loved ones from all the negative qualities. And we ask Allah to give us all the qualities of khair, all the qualities that are pleasing to Him, all of the qualities that will lead us to success. We ask Allah to forgive us for our sins that we do knowingly, the sins that we do unknowingly, and the sins that we will do tomorrow. We ask Allah to have mercy on all the believing men and women. We ask Allah to have mercy on all of those who have passed away. We ask Allah to help and make ease for those who are going through hardship. We ask Allah to have mercy on those who are going through illness and to ease them into their passing. We ask Allah that wherever there are oppressed around the world, the oppressed like the Bani Israel under Fir'aun, and by Allah there are oppressed today, we ask Allah to ease their oppression. We ask Allah to relieve them from their oppression. We ask Allah to send someone like Musa alayhi salam to free them from their oppression. We ask Allah to unify our hearts. We ask Allah to make our children the coolness of our eyes, the families, families that we will enter into Jannah al firdaus with. We ask Allah to send His blessings and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وأقيم الصلاة